This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Clayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman, another very important show. I was in Washington, D.C. this week for my client, my brave patriotic client, Jerry Corsi. The doctor, we can call him, Dr. J. I was there because he had taken on Robert Mueller. He succeeded. He was not indicted for alleged perjury or anything else in the witch hunt of Robert Mueller. Roger Stone was. Of course, he was not. That trial's going forward beginning on November 4th, and I'll be there monitoring that on behalf of Dr. Corsi. But the reality here is that Dr. Corsi stood up to the powers to be and won. He fought the, quote, law. Of course, these people are lawless and won. And we're going to be talking about that in the third segment of this special prosecutor with Larry Clayman, with Jason Goodman, who was there, who was observing what went on with Judge Helen Siegel Uvell. This was a case that I brought with regard to alleged illegal surveillance, criminal grand jury leaks, and, of course, violations of constitutional rights. Because Dr. Corsi was being forced to lie to implicate the president in Russian collusion and crimes. Otherwise, he was going to be indicted. So we sued under the First Amendment and the 14th Amendment, the First Amendment for abridgment of free speech and the 14th Amendment for Fourth Amendment, rather, for unreasonable searches and seizures, the illegal surveillance. But before I get to that, something very interesting and troubling happened while I was in D.C., I got a message from our webmaster that our YouTube channel had been pulled down by YouTube, suspended. And the notice said that they were complaining that there was, quote, hate speech. So they took everything down, all of our videos, everything. And, of course, we have sued Google and YouTube. We sued Apple. We sued Instagram. We sued other social media companies in an antitrust class action suit, Laura Loomer and I. It's class action for discrimination against conservatives and restraint of trade and attempted monopolization. Now, when that happened, of course, that was shocking. But of course, as you probably know, if you go to our YouTube channel, we've stayed relatively flat now for years. We have not increased. And that was part of this lawsuit is that Google is putting some kind of governor on our account. They don't want us to grow. They don't want us to get bigger. We should have several hundred subscribers by now with the news that we make every single week. But we don't. So I contacted Google's lawyers, the same lawyers that are defending them in this antitrust lawsuit, because last week's radio show, as you may remember, I announced that we're going to be reconvening the citizens grand jury to indict Joe Biden and his half wit son. And that's not hate speech, speech, half wit son, Hunter, for the alleged corruption and bribery that occurred in the Ukraine. In addition to that, I had Joel Gilbert on, the great Hollywood film producer and film writer. And he talked about the Trayvon hoax and how he uncovered that there was a false witness, a fraudulent witness provided to the prosecution, the state of Florida, in that case that George Zimmerman ultimately was acquitted of. If he hadn't been acquitted, George Zimmerman could have done life imprisonment. And in Florida, they even still have the electric chair because, as you know, Trayvon died. George Zimmerman was not responsible for that. Trayvon was. He created his own situation. And that's what we talked about. And a false witness was put forward by the prosecutors, by the Florida state prosecutors, and also by the attorney for uh, one of the witnesses for the family, rather, of Trayvon Martin. And this is a major issue. Well, I told the lawyers of Google, I said, you better put this thing back up and you better do it fast 
or I'm going to bring another lawsuit and I'm going to inform the appellate court where our antitrust case is now pending at the D.C. Circuit that you're continuing to commit anti-competitive acts. And I'm also going to join Joe Biden and his son as defendants, because I believe that what happened last week was that Biden's people intervened, either Biden in a personal capacity, Hunter Biden in a personal capacity, or the campaign to take down our YouTube channel because we were saying we were going to indict the Bidens. This is the world that we live in today. It's retaliatory. You know what we're going through with regard to President Trump. Everybody who is a conservative who is challenging this radical left winds up getting retaliated against, whether it's with smears in the media, whether it's with impeachment proceedings in the case of President Trump for another bogus allegation of a scandal involving the Ukraine, or whether it's Larry Klayman and others before bar associations when leftist lawyers who run these bar associations are trying to eliminate conservative lawyers from the practice of law. And we'll talk about more of that in future radio shows, because I've been subjected to that. And I've been subjected to that because, in fact, I'm the one who sticks my neck out here. I'm taking these people on. And if you look at who runs the D.C. Bar Disciplinary Council, you'll see these people give heavily to the Democrats, whether it's Clinton or Obama or whoever. There's a massive effort nationwide to take out conservatives, not just President Trump. And they don't want you to have free speech. They don't want you to be able to communicate with your followers. Because, you know, as I've said many times, in the days and months leading up to the revolution, it was the printing press which coalesced the colonies, which got everybody together, which got them to understand what a threat King George III and his tyrannical monarchy are and were. Well, I say are because what we have today is much worse than what we saw under King George III. And I'll tell you, being in Washington when all of this was happening reminded me of just how evil that place is. I mean, there's just a dark cloud hanging over it at all times. I've spent most of my adult life there. I go back there now when I have to for hearings, like I did with the Corsi hearing with regard to the case against Robert Mueller. Do I enjoy being there? No. I don't enjoy being there because nothing ever gets accomplished. But worse than that, everybody is trying to destroy everybody else and the needs and the requirements of the American people to make this country a better place are being subverted. You know, I said during the Lewinsky scandal that while Bill Clinton was engaging with sex, and that's what, of course, gave rise with it, the White House intern, that it was the American people that were getting screwed, pun intended. Because while all of that was going on, while all of this mania was occurring with impeachment with Bill Clinton, I, and frankly, you know, he should have been impeached for much more important things like China Gate, Filegate, IRS Gate. Osama bin Laden was building up, and we saw what happened on 9 11. Now, Clinton did that to himself, but he took the eye off the ball with Lewinsky. And in fact, everybody took the eye off the ball with impeachment with regard to Bill Clinton. He should have been impeached. He should have been convicted. He should have been thrown out. It should have been quick. It was not quick. And because of that, the country ground to a halt. The Republicans lacked the guts to convict him in the in the U.S. Senate. And we paid the price. And we're going to pay the price now with the impeachment, which is looming with regard to President Trump. And that's why we have to do everything we can to head that off. And we're doing that at Freedom Watch. Go to freedomwatchusa.org with regard to our citizens' grand juries, our hard-hitting cases. We need to protect this president because if, if he's thrown out of office, can you imagine what we're going to get after that? You know, I like Vice President Pence, but they're after him, too. They want to impeach him as well. He's now implicated falsely in this Ukrainian scandal for doing the bidding of Donald Trump. So to our other cabinet officials. But we cannot let this happen. But what happened with YouTube this week is demonstrative of how there's a full court press to destroy conservatives and anyone who supports the president of the United States. All means are being used because when these ultra leftists take control of this country, they will try to build it back in their own concept of what this country should be, which will be like a Soviet style gulag. I don't know if any of you have ever read Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. I'm writing a column. You can find it on freedomwatchusa.org and reclaimamerica.org or dot com. It's talking about the never Trumpers. They're a threat, too. 
It's not just the left. It's the Republican establishment and those who did not like Trump who are ready to stab a knife in his back and other conservatives that will stand up for him. It is not assured that even if the president is impeached, and he most likely will be, that the Senate will not vote conviction because there are a number of senators up there, many, as a matter of fact, who would like to see the president gone. They resent him because he's challenged the establishment. Mitt Romney is one. The two-faced Lindsey Graham, though he pretends to be the friend of the president, he's not the friend of the president, and nor any of these other people the friend of the president. They went along to get along. And this is a very dangerous world that we live in right now. And that's why we need your support at freedomwatchusa.org. But let me give you the end of the story. Google backed down. They restored our YouTube account. All of our videos are up there. This radio show is going to be up there. And I'm convinced that the Bidens were behind it. And watch what we do in that regard. I'm not going to sue Google YouTube. I already have a lawsuit on that right now. But I'll tell you something. The Bidens are in my legal crosshairs right now. And they're going to be held accountable for having us removed from YouTube. This is the way these people operate. And they will pay the price, not just with regard to maybe a civil lawsuit if I decide to bring that, but also with regard to citizens' grand juries, because it's illegal to intimidate a lawyer uh, in a case that involves these kinds of facts, that are involved these kinds of stakes. So I'm going to be right back with our second segment of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. Thank God our YouTube was restored. We are on other channels as well. We're on Patreon, we're on Roku, we're on Amazon Fire. It wasn't the end of the world. But the fact that they would take us down and claim that because we said we were going to hold Joe Biden accountable, that was hate speech. Or the fact that we talked about Trayvon Martin and the fraud there tells you what we're going through today. We have to stand up for ourselves. We need to fight for what is right. We cannot be afraid. I'll be right back with the second segment of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Special Prosecutor, Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. We're back with Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. I'm talking about how we have to be vigilant, not just with regard to the rabid left, not just with regard to the Democrats who want to destroy everything in their path, but with regard to the never Trumpers. So read my column that's up on freedomwatchusa.org because they're ready to stab the back of the president with a sharp knife. And the Republican rhinos in Congress, they cannot be dependent upon. So we need to rise up ourselves and we need to protect this president, because if he's removed from office, the next one will be 100 times worse than Barack Hussein Obama. Watch what we do also in the next few weeks with regard to new lawsuits, with regard to Laura Loomer, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Judge Roy Moore and others. We're not sitting here twiddling our thumbs. We are your Justice Department. We are standing there for you because our Justice Department is nowhere to be found. As of today, there is still no indictment of Deputy FBI Director, former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe. The Attorney General took a dive on two occasions and refused to indict James Comey. We're going to be indicting both of them. We're going to be indicting not just the Bidens, but also shifty Adam Schiff of West Hollywood fame. He's the congressman from West Hollywood. And we are out there on your behalf. We're not just gathering documents, as I've said. You know, documents are good, but you have to use the documents. The group which I founded, Judicial Watch, they mostly gather documents or they're involved in election matters in California. It doesn't matter what they do in California. This case is Democrat. It's always going to stay Democrat, this, this state. But what really counts is trying to bring about change in the courts. And we're going to talk about that with Jason Goodman in the next segment. And I also want to talk about what's happening in colleges and universities. It's very troubling. You know, I, I love my alma mater, Duke University. I'm very proud of it. I mentioned it many, many times. When I was there, it was a different institution. It was right of center. I saw very few, very few protests with regard to the Vietnam War even during that period of time. But Duke has become the Berkeley of the South, and so has the University of North Carolina, and it's a shame. Just 
This week, or at least in the last few weeks, Betsy DeVos, the Secretary of Education, cut off funding for a program which is promoting the religion of Islam over Christianity and Judaism. It's unbelievable that that they would do that. And, you know, it, it, frankly, it's a disgrace. And I call on anybody who went to Duke like me or wants to contribute to Duke to cut off the contributions, just cut it off, because we had a bunch of professors come forward this week criticizing Betsy DeVos and the Department of Education. And frankly, this is unacceptable. And just a few years ago, they were allowing for Muslim prayer in the middle of the main campus in the quad, which was disrupting everybody in a Methodist university, no doubt, no less rather. And, you know, it's if the Muslims want to go pray, OK, but don't pray and disrupt an entire campus. It was done right to the next to the main library at Duke University. And, they, and the Duke University hierarchy folded on that as well. And of course, we know what they did with the lacrosse team. You know, they process, they threw the lacrosse players out when this was a, a front operation by these women who made up false claims. So these universities need to be held accountable. And there's also a discussion right now, and I want to get into this before I have Jason Goodman on in the third segment. This whole idea of paying college athletes, you know, we're one and done. You know, we're Zion Williamson. It looks like he's a nice kid where these people come and they play basketball for one year and they leave. An institution like Duke or for that matter, any higher institution should be for education. Shouldn't be a a professional sport. Shouldn't be that these people are paid. They should be privileged that they're able to go there, that they have a scholarship, that they can get an education. And frankly, the NCAA needs to step in as well, even though California now is saying that These athletes should be paid. They need to step in and say, no, no more one and done. If you want to go to the NBA, go to the NBA. But don't bastardize what an institution like Duke is all about. I look at Mike Krzyzewski, you know, and I don't even get that much satisfaction watching Duke win basketball games anymore because it's simply a professional team. What's the point? They don't represent the student body. And, And, you know, it's just a complete charade. And that's not just true at Duke. It's true with all of them. This is what our country has become. It's become phony, top to bottom, between the millennials texting all the time and the vicious people in Washington, D.C. and in the political system, the leftist media, the bar associations and this and that. This country is losing its grip and we need to bring it back with Judeo-Christian principles, Ten Commandments, right and wrong, ethics, the fact that We have our founding fathers who certainly believe that we're a God-given country. I'm going to be back with Jason Goodman. I'm just going to tell you what went on with Robert Mueller, because we need to keep punching. We need to keep fighting. We need to save this country. And your Freedom Watch is doing just that. I'll be right back. that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I'm back with my very good friend Jason Goodman, the owner and proprietor of Crowdsource the Truth. He's someone who tells the truth. He is alternative conservative media, but that doesn't mean that it's lesser conservative media. It means that it's the real conservative media. And you don't have to be conservative to tell the truth, libertarian, conservative, whatever. But you need to get the people's informed as to what's really going on. And Jason was in court this week when I was arguing on behalf of Dr. Jerome Corsi. It was our so-called government that stepped in to defend Robert Mueller on charges that we had filed of illegal government surveillance of criminal grand jury leaks and other types of crimes which Mueller had committed by trying to suborn perjury with Dr. Corsi, threatening Dr. Corsi with an indictment if he did not lie and implicate the president in communicating with WikiLeaks and the Russians. And I appeared in front of the Honorable Helen Siegel Uvell, who's a Clinton appointee, it was very interesting about what happened. I want Jason to tell the tale from his perspective because he was sitting there 
He's very observant. He's very smart. I want to get your take on it, Jason. Tell our listeners exactly what went on from your vantage point sitting there. Thanks for having me back on. I've become really interested in observing these court proceedings because before, you know, two years ago when I started Crowdsource the Truth, I had basically only been to like jury duty and didn't even get on the jury. So for a lot of people, including myself, what goes on inside these courtrooms, it's very much of a black box. And I think when it comes to the law and our rights and what goes on in government and even in these courts, for most people, it's a big unknown. And I've observed you in several different courts. I've observed you interacting with several different judges. And it's, it's very interesting. I really think it would be a huge boon for justice if courts were modernized to the extent that every single court proceeding should be broadcast on video, live streamed to uh, some website, like a YouTube style video, so that Everyone can observe what's going on because, of course, it's the adversarial process, and that's what it's based on. But when you began your oral arguments, you were the first to speak. The judge, I observed, was very adversarial towards you. And then when the defense, the attorneys representing Robert Mueller came up, they seemed much more to be on the same team. And and that's sort of stating the obvious. I mean, Dr. Corsi, in his capacity as an individual, is suing Robert Mueller and the U.S. government. And it is stating the obvious that when you sue the government and you show up in court, the deck is stacked against you. The government is presiding over the proceedings. I know who Judge Uvell was. I haven't appeared in front of her for many years. She's a Clinton appointee. She's very partisan. Most of the judges in that courthouse are partisan on both sides of the aisle, Democrat and Republican. Some of them play it straight, like Judge Royce Lamberth, he's just a tough judge. He's held uh, Republican cabinet members in criminal contempt, Gail Norton, over an Indian trust fund. But there are very few like that. The judge came after me initially, and we respect each other, and we got along with each other, but we pushed hard with each other. And we're hopeful that in the end, she will understand what it is I was saying, because what I was saying is, is that Robert Mueller is not personally immune from liability because he was the special counsel, that when you violate the constitutional rights of an American citizen, you lose your immunity as a government official. Now, interestingly enough, and what I pointed out to Judge Uvell was, she herself wrote a decision which I cited, which is directly on point, when she held for an employee of Voice of America that that employee could sue the Board of Governors, the officials that sit over the board. You know, Voice of America is our propaganda organ to promote freedom throughout the world. And she sued the Board of Governors for employment discrimination, and Judge Uvell allowed that to proceed against them individually. There was also another case that I pointed out to her that I litigated when I was with Judicial Watch called Trulock versus Free. The, right. That former FBI director, Louis Free, who took a dive on the Chinagate scandal with Janet Reno, who was the attorney general under Clinton, had broken into the House, his agents, of my client, Notre Trulock, who was writing a book and very critical of the FBI because the FBI had not properly investigated the theft of our nuclear codes by a scientist by the name of Wen Ho Lee, who had ties to communist China, he and his wife. And I brought a lawsuit on behalf of Wen Ho Lee and against Louis Free because his agents went in there, seized a computer without a warrant to gather evidence against Notre Trulock. Gun butted his dog. The, Notre found wow. his dog lying with blood on the floor as a warning that they could be next. And there was no proof at that time when I brought the case that Louis Free himself was in the house doing this. But I alleged that he had directed his agents to do this. Obviously, he, he must have done that. This was very high profile. This was a major breach of American national security that was at stake. Yeah. And I alleged the same thing with Dr. Corsi, that Robert Mueller, a special counsel, had to have directed his top prosecutors, Aaron Zielinski and Jeannie Rhee and the rest of them, to threaten Jerry Corsi with indictment if he would not lie, suborning perjury. So the first question I get from Judge Uvell, you don't have any proof that special counsel Robert Mueller ordered that, do you? I said, I don't need proof, Your Honor. (laughs) Okay, we're at the the pleading stage of the complaint. You have to accept what I say is true. But if you want to go further than that, then let's bring in special counsel Mueller, put him on the witness stand, put him under oath. And I'm sure 
If he's going to tell the truth, we'll find out that he knew what was going on and he ordered it. And I said, Your Honor, if you don't believe that, we all live on Pluto. And then she says to me, well, I guess then I live on Mars. You know, right. and, and, she did say that. Uh, yeah. And this is what went on during the case. She was looking for a way out of having to hold Mueller accountable because all these people are part of the club. I told her that. I said, Your Honor, in all due respect, it's a big club here in Washington. I lived here for 25 years. You know, everybody goes to the same parties. They eat lunch together. You know, it, it, Democrat or Republican, it's all part of the same National Football League, American League and, and yeah. National League. And, Your Honor, you have to be different because if this thing goes on, we're not going to have a country. The people out there in the streets know just how corrupt this place is. I mean, I was really blunt with her, and I'm getting the transcript, Jason. I'm going to make it available at freedomwatchusa.org. I'm going to give it to you. You did an interview with Dr. Corsi yesterday on Patreon and on yeah. Crowdsource the Truth. People need to understand what went on. So tell us you know, what more you think in terms of what's going on, because it's not just with regard to Jerry Corsi. It's not just a stacked deck with regard to him. You know, it's the Clive and Bundys. I'm dealing with, you know, an appeal right. of that taken by the Trump Justice Department. It's, you know, it's others out there who have been just they, the government tries to run them over and threaten them. And, yeah. you know, it's well, just I, something that can't be allowed. Yeah. And in many regards, Larry, there's obviously it's impossible to create a perfect process, but there's many flaws. And the moment that you just described was a key moment in, in many ways, because while I appreciate the fact that the judge needs to be adversarial and needs to you know, push back on whatever is said to compel the, uh, the attorney to provide a convincing argument, you know, she was basically suggesting that Robert Mueller's team of prosecutors were running amok and doing whatever they wanted without any oversight or direction from Robert Mueller, which if that's the position of the government and the special counsel's office, well, then let's have that be known. Because what I observed was you're you're trying to conduct a normal civil lawsuit where the defendant is you know brought through the discovery process to be deposed to provide the documents from their files that allow you to gain the evidence that you need to argue your case. And nothing was said about this specifically by the judge or the defendants, the counsel for the defendants. But what I observed was a collection of people who absolutely did not want that to happen at all. She was really tough on me, and I'm still hopeful that we're going to win this in whole or in part. I, I believe that I made some very strong arguments. Jerry Corsi and his wife, Monica, were very optimistic when we left, but we've got to be realists, too. I mean, these are very partisan judges, and they tend to protect their own. But on the other hand, the government lawyers get up after me. I stood up there for an hour and a quarter, and she just asked them some softball pro questions just so she could say she did it, you know? And, yeah. and they couldn't well, even answer those grateful. questions. It was so embarrassing watching them. I, I thought that the federal, the public defender and, and my cousin Vinny, I was telling you, <laughs> the one that stuttered, you know, was more articulate than these Justice Department lawyers. And I was also taken by the fact that Mueller didn't even send his own counsel there to defend him. That's how confident he right. was that this judge would dismiss the case. I mean, it's just, it was theater of the absurd to watch the government stumble like this. And they couldn't get a word out of their mouth. They were walking back yeah. and forth unprepared, you know, whatever. What, what do you think about their performance? Well, they seemed like law school students. I mean, and it's interesting because this is the second time that we've seen uh, attorneys representing the special counsel's office, and they seem very young, very inexperienced, very nervous. They were, you know, struggling to find words, uh, kind of uh, looking through their notes, looking back and forth with each other. There was a real lack of confidence. And the most objectionable thing that they did, they kept referring to Dr. Corsi as Mr. Corsi. Now, it's one thing to have a slip of the tongue, to make a mistake, whatever it might be. Uh, but even if they did not know who the plaintiff in the case they are defending their client against is, his name was said repeatedly by the judge, by you. It, it was an obvious effort to show disrespect to the doctor. And after the hearing ended, I spoke to these attorneys outside, and I directly asked them, 
you know, do you not know the plaintiff's name or are you deliberately trying to disrespect him? And they refuse to answer. So it's, it's a real problem, Larry. Like when someone goes to work for the government, they're not choosing to start their own business. They're not choosing to work for a private corporation. They are becoming public servants, civil servants. They are supposed to be working for the people and not becoming some member of this elite club that tells us all what to do, can abuse our rights, can show up in court with this uh, uh, immunity. What was the specific word that's used? Qualified immunity. Qualified immunity. What the hell they want. Yeah. I mean, I object to this process. I really do believe we need a fundamental change where prosecutors need to be held accountable for things that they do that other citizens would uh, face you know, charges and penalties for. Because we see it happening all the time. That the and, in that reg- prosecutors- yeah, and, in that, and in that regard, I did cite a case in the, 11, in the Seventh Circuit of the United States, the various courts, where prosecutors, if they present false evidence, can be held personally accountable. I'm convinced, Jason, we're going to win this case in the end. If I have to win it on appeal, we'll win it on appeal. We'll pray that we get a good panel at the D.C. Circuit. But this case, if she dismisses it, is coming back. So I hope that the judge is listening to this. Judge, I respect you. You have your position. I have my position. I'm hopeful that you'll rule in our favor. But if not, the D.C. Circuit will clearly rule in Dr. Corsi's favor. And it doesn't matter how long it takes to get justice. We're going to pursue it. We never give up. But, you know, there was another funny thing that occurred. I I have to laugh all the time is that every time I have a hearing, uh, Fitton sends two lawyers from Judicial Watch over to watch me. He thinks he's going to intimidate me with that. I actually find it quite funny. And they sit there in the courtroom. They don't wear a coat and tie, a lack of respect. And it's just humorous. I call one of them Goofy. He looks like the guy Goofy from uh, well, Walt Disney. His name's Jim Peterson. I actually hired him when I was at Judicial Watch. But, you know, the old expression, love the one you're with. So, you know, why Fitton does this? He must feel very competitive with me that he has to send these people in. They troll me throughout Washington, D.C. They stalk me. It's funny at this point. And they come in street clothes. You think they were just pushing a cart on Constitution Avenue and just came up to get get warm or something. But there's some humor to that. Yeah, it seems like a real waste of resources. And I I recognize those guys, but I didn't know who they were until after the proceedings. And you told me and it's uh, really bizarre. You know, I think a lot of people like the work that Judicial Watch is doing, but they don't know the backstory. They don't know the things that have gone on between you and your former group there. So uh, I know what it feels like, Larry, to be betrayed by people that you put trust in, and it hurts a lot. And um, to have them continue to try to damage your reputation and the work that you're doing. I mean, look, let's put it this way. Whatever they think about you, Larry, what you're doing in this case and what Dr. Corsi is doing in this case is so important for justice. Even if someone personally dislikes you or Dr. Corsi or disagrees politically or ideologically with you or Dr. Corsi. Jason, we're we're out of time right now. We'll get into it some other time. But uh, this is what I've been dealing with with Fitton for 16 years. I'll be right back with the verdict section of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Before he was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Klayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. We're back with the verdict section of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Whether it's Sheriff Joe Arpaio, whether it's Chief Justice Roy more, whether it's Jerry Corsi, whether it's Laura Loomer, whether it's my clients of Extortion 17, whose sons were killed in the biggest loss of life in the Afghan war. These are the kinds of things that I do. OK, I'm, I'm the lawyer, you know, frankly, that'll stand up when no one else will stand up. And that's why it's so bizarre that I have to be trolled by Fitton of Judicial Watch. He's not a lawyer who's jealous of what we do. Yeah, they get documents. I think Jason was a little too charitable there. I love Jason. But, you know, what good are documents if you don't use anything that you get where all you do is you go on Hannity and you say, gee, I'm really mad the government's not doing anything. 
now is not the time to be mad. Now's the time to get even peacefully and legally. Now's the time for the American people to rise up. Now's the time that we have to save our country because our president is on the ropes. And if he goes down and he's going to not just go down because of the Democrats, he's going to go down because there are a number of never Trumpers that are out there and read that column at freedomwatchusa.org and reclaimamerica.com that I wrote today. Uh, it's going to be a full court press because the establishment never liked this president. And the reason that I love this president is because he'll buck all convention. And when the Democrats started screaming and they said, OK, we're going to impeach you because you asked the Ukrainian president to investigate the Bidens, the president said, you know what, you. OK, I'm not going to use any profanity here, but. Now I'm going to ask China to investigate them, too, because they pulled the same bribery scam with the Chinese. You know, it's he's in your face. And what he says to himself is, and this is important because this is what our founding fathers said. You know, our, our founding fathers violated the law to enforce the law. They went against the edicts of King George III. They were outlaws. They said there's a higher order here. There's the order of God. You know, God gives us our authority. And they said, no, we're going to have our own legal system. We're going to do what we think is right, and we're going to clean this mess up. Now, the president hasn't committed any major crime. He hasn't killed anybody. He hasn't threatened anybody physically. He's simply saying, hey, my Justice Department is compromised. They should be looking into the Ukraine. So therefore, I'm going to do it myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's the chief law enforcement officer of this country. And when you hear people like the husband of Kellyanne Conway, George Conway, that blowhard, you know, ripping into the president, saying that he's mentally ill every single day. I don't know how Kellyanne stays with him. She probably isn't. She's probably out of the house by now. And thank God, because there's a security risk to be in the house with that guy. Or when you listen to so-called Judge Andrew Napolitano in Fox News, you know, just this week, Rush Limbaugh said, we're going to call it the Never Trumper Fox News Network. And you listen to him claim that the president has committed a crime. Well, he can't cite one crime the president's committed, but he knows he committed a crime because he was some low level backwater judge in New Jersey. He becomes the expert. He's just mad, like Conway is, that the president didn't give him a high post in the government. Napolitano wanted to be Supreme Court justice. I mean, give me a break. Supreme Court justice for this guy or Conway wanted to be solicitor general in the Justice Department. President had the good sense to say no. But this is why we, the American people, need to stand up for this president. Because if he goes down, we go down with him. And we will do it peacefully and legally. At Freedom Watch, your Freedom Watch, we will use citizens' grand juries. We will use hard hitting cases. We'll use the media. Please share this radio show. It's the Clarion Call. We'll use YouTube. We're back on YouTube. And, and you know, encourage your friends to. Subscribe. We're on Patreon. We're on other services. These are the kinds of things that we need to do if we're going to save the country. And that's the verdict, my friends. And also go support Clive and Bundy. We're defending against this appeal by the Trump Justice Department when he was effectively acquitted. Now they want to try to throw him back in prison. It's, it's unbelievable. This is the Trump Justice Department. The president's not in charge. The deep state's in charge. They go against him. They surveil him. They do all kinds of things, all these stool pigeons and everybody else. The president's not even Kroll. So, yeah, he took it under his own hands to ask the Ukrainian president to do an investigation of the corrupt Bidens. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. But until that happens, please go to our website at freedomwatchusa.org. Support us. Join our Justice League. Go to Clive and Bundy Defense Fund. .org, contribute to his cause. Go to CourseyLegalDefenseFund.com. Contribute to that. Those are private cases. And please, stay vigilant and help me save this country. God bless you and God bless your family. I'll see you next week. 